what a beautiful morning. It's good to see you all. Thank you for coming today. Would you join me in prayer, please? Oh, Lord God of all mercies, we praise you that you have brought us to this new day, brightening our days with the dawn of promise and hope in Jesus Christ. Especially we thank you for the incredible nature that you have surrounded us with, especially here in, in Cresswell as I was driving to church. Oh God, that sky was so beautiful. And I think you are a master artist. So well done. We thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the support and encouragement we receive from each other. We thank you for those who provide safety and care to us in this crazy world. And we thank you for those who are trying to spread your love and care around the world. Merciful Father, we pray that you will strengthen us, that we may lift up the brokenness of this world for your healing and share in the saving grace of Jesus Christ. We especially pray for those we have mentioned, love, and know about even in the privacy of our own minds. We hold them before you, O oh God. We put them in the presence of Jesus Christ that you may give them what they need and hold them close to your heart. We trust you and we thank you, God, for the answers we receive. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The scripture readings today are a multitude of different ones. First, there's Genesis 1, 31. And God saw all that he had made, and behold, it was good. I referenced uh, the whole book of Job in, in a very simplified version. I'm not going to read that to you. Luke 11, 9 through 13. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to, who him, and to him who knocks, it shall be opened. Now suppose one of you is asked by his son for a fish. He will not give him a snake instead of a fish, will he? Or if he is asked for an egg, he will not give his son a scorpion, will he? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father, the Holy Spirit, to those who ask him? Romans 5.5 5. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. In Galatians 5, 22, 23, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And the basis comes from Romans 8, 2 through 30. <clears throat> For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. Excuse me just a second. I am getting older. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For what the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, God did, sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and as an offering for sin. He condemns sin in the flesh in order that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us 
who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who are according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who are according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For the mindset on the flesh is death, but the mindset on the Spirit is life and peace. Because the mindset on the flesh is hostile toward God, for it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. However, you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. But if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, He does not belong to him. And if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, yet the spirit is alive because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So then, brethren, we are under obligation not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you are living according to the flesh, you must die. But if by the Spirit you are putting to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For if you... If you have not received a spirit of slavery leading to fear again, but you have received a spirit of adoption as sons by which we cry out, Abba, Father, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, we are heirs, also heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, in order that we may also be glorified with him. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the anxious longing of the creation waits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but because of him who subjected it in hope that the creation itself also will be set free from its slavery to corruption into the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and suffers the pains of childbirth together until now. And not only this, but also we ourselves, having the first fruits of the Spirit, Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting eagerly for our adoption as the sons and the redemption of our body. For in hope we have been saved. But hope that is seen is not hope, for why does one hope for something that you can see? But if we hope for what we do not see, which perseverance we wait eagerly for it. And in the same way, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses. For we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the heart knows that what the mind of the Spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. For we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknown, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, and whom he predestined, these he also called, and whom he called, these he also justified, and whom he justified, these he also glorified. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks. Well, Thursday, Seth called and he said, would you be willing to be plan B for Sunday service? And I readily agreed because I knew exactly what I wanted to share with you. 
And then I remembered it was Halloween. <laughs> I thought, oh, I can't do that. <coughs> Excuse me. I would tell you, I grew up with two parents who absolutely loved Halloween. For us, for as long as I can remember, the Halloween evening was a joyous, joyous time of homemade goodies, fun ways to greet the trick-or-treaters. And the best part was the drive that Dad took us on after we had, Lon and I had traversed the neighborhood and got as many pieces of candy as we could in that area. We'd pile in the car, and he would take us to the grannies and the aunties, and they would give us the full-size candy bars. The other thing that we did on that drive stemmed from the rule, because even back in those good old days, there were naughty people who put poison or dangerous things in candy. And so the rule was anything that wasn't wrapped that we didn't know who gave it to us, like if I got one of Peggy's popcorn balls, it was okay. But things that weren't wrapped had to go in the garbage. So one of the things that we did as we drove to the grannies and the aunties was that dad would have us go through our sacks and hand up to him all of the unwrapped candy. That unwrapped candy did not go in the garbage can. It didn't even get home, I know. <laughs> and I'm always suspicious of the coffee mug that he insisted that he take with us because it never smelled like coffee. <laughs> That boy, I'll tell you. I have inherited, however, my mom's intolerance for scary movies. Now, mom never was much for sitting down and watching TV with us anyhow, but she would often be in the kitchen, puttering around, listening to the show, peeking around the corner every once in a while to see what was happening on the TV. But if there was anything on the yikes scale, she would pretend to clean out the refrigerator because she could put her head behind the door, she couldn't see the TV, and she would rattle things in the refrigerator so she couldn't hear. I'm a little bit like that. I don't like scary things. My idea of a good Halloween TV show might be uh, Great Britain's Halloween Bake Off. Or if I have company, then I might watch Casper the Ghost. I know when I was a, a teenager, my cousin came with his girlfriend, and they sat with me to watch Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. I was scared to pieces. That was so scary. And I think, oh, Jackie, Jackie. So horror movies are... You know what? Actually, as I look around and I think about some of the people that are home, you've lived through some horror movies, haven't you? You've lived through times that were horrifying, that were black and lonely desperate, horrifying, gruesome. You've lived through times when you were so lonely, frightened, and definitely painful. Why are you here? Why are you here? You know, there's this idea that has come since Job. And it's called the prosperity gospel. And simplified, it means that supposedly, if you are doing good, you're following the rules, you believe in God, God will reward you with wealth, power, and security. You're all sitting here knowing that isn't the truth. Yeah, we get it that we're not perfect, but we haven't murdered anybody recently. 
We, and the things we have stolen weren't worth that much anyhow. And the people we offended, they deserved it. Yeah. But it seems like even though we've done that, some of the things that you've had to live through don't balance. The bad is so bad. So why are you here? And there's, there's even Jesus Christ, the perfect one, God's son. And God let him die a gruesome death on the cross, which was, by the way, not the worst part of the death. Lots of people were crucified back then. Aren't we a thoughtful, loving people? The worst part of Christ's death, the God he loved, the God he was a part of, the God who had taken him from birth, well, before birth on, deserted him. That was the worst part. He was left alone during that horrible time. So why are we here? If guarantee, if believing doesn't guarantee a perfect life. Well, I got a couple ideas. Number one, I think you are here because when you're here, you're not alone. I think when you're here, you feel cared about. I think when you are here, you are a part of something good. When you are here, you know that if you are in need, someone here will help you. And when you're here, you know that most of us know your story and they'll sit by you anyway. We feel loved just the way we are. Now, granted, the person sitting next to you could do with some refining, but basically, again, we're okay people. But the biggest reason I think you're here is like what it says in Romans. Inside you, there is a flicker, maybe it's, maybe it's a whole flame of desire. A desire for God. And he sees that desire and he calls you and you are responding to that calling. I believe and guess that within you there's actually a real hope that somewhere, sometime, somehow, you will experience God and his perfection, maybe even like the Garden of Eden, where you can walk and talk with him and everything is okay, where there's peace and joy and love and kindness and goodness. Isn't that what we want? We can say the words, Jesus died for my sin. He washed me clean as snow. I'm washed in the blood. But, and, and our desire is there, but I think there's also that little fear that maybe we're not good enough. So we keep coming back, hoping we are encouraged and supported. But we got that little bit of fear that maybe we're not good enough. Maybe we haven't done enough. We haven't earned our right into that garden yet. I'm going to give you an example. 
For almost two years now, we've listened to our precious Seth beg us to take on the two and a half greatest commandments, to love God with our whole being and to love our neighbor and the half is as ourselves so that we need to love ourselves besides. Even after his wonderful sermons, Sunday after Sunday, I'm still not there. I am confessing before you right now that when I listen to the news, so I've kind of turned it off for your sake and mine, I get angry. I get angry at the division in our country, a country that has more than the rest of the world put together, and we still can't love each other. And I get angry, and sometimes, unfortunately, the real sinful part of me is I transfer that anger to some of you if you disagree with me. I also, so I don't love my neighbor, obviously, and I have trouble with my loving God. I depend more on my bank account than I do on trusting God to get me through tomorrow. I hold on to resentments. And I don't have loving thoughts about myself. Even with those beautiful sermons, I can't do it. And I am guessing that you can't either. None of us can do it by ourselves, no matter how hard we try. We have to give it up. We have to go to God because he's the only one who can help us. We have to ask him in humbleness and in prayerfulness, God, I can't do it. I want to, or maybe I don't even want to. But I can't do it. I need help. And we ask the Spirit to come within us and to delve deep into the places that we can't reach. Find the things that we don't even know are broken and fix them. And until we can do that, we're not capable of saving ourselves. We have to let go and let God's spirit, not the stereotypical Halloween spirit, but the almighty, powerful, very fixing spirit of God. He will come in if you ask him. He will make the changes. And you can experience the love that you desire, the love that God intended for us to experience. And then we watch. We ask him in, and then we watch. I remember so well my baptism because it was so boring. No dove came down. No voice from heaven shouted, this is my beloved daughter whom I'm well pleased. It was just plain water on my head and Norm blessed me. But ever since then, God has been leading me along helping me to find the way to a better life, to a life here on earth. Now, I don't have to wait for heaven. It can happen here. I'm still, I'm still a, a failure, but I'm trusting and hoping and knowing because I want him, I have asked him into my life that he is fixing me 
And I'm going to give you that chance right now to do that too. We're going to do a short prayer. And in the middle of that short prayer, I'm going to be silent for a whole minute. And believe me, a minute doesn't sound very long. But when you're quiet and waiting and doing nothing, it can be a long time. So you might as well pray. Ask him. Tell him that you want him. Ask him into your heart. And he will come, I promise you. Would you join me in prayer, please? Oh God, we come to you now knowing we are not what you want us to be. Send your spirit to us and fill us and change us so that we can become what you intended us to be. Each person here has their own needs and you are the only one who knows what is needed most. Give us courage, God, to accept you into our lives, knowing that the pruning or proofing or shredding may not be fun, but it will bring us the fruits we so desperately desire. Protect us, O oh God, from the evilness within us and around us. Hear our prayer. Oh God, our Father, we thank you. Thank you for knowing us and loving us anyway. Thank you for your Son and thank you, Jesus, for saving us with your life and your love. Thank you, Spirit. Stay with us, even when we aren't aware. We love you and we praise you. Amen. Would you join me in the affirmation of faith, please? This is the good news that we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved. If we hold it fast, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, and that he appeared first to the women, then to Peter, and to the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus Christ is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He is our Lord and our God. Amen. O gracious and holy God, give us diligence to seek you, wisdom to perceive you, and patience to wait for you. Grant us, O oh God, a mind to meditate on you, eyes to behold you, ears to listen for your word, a heart to love you. Through the power of the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs>